I, we don't even have a name for the podcast. No, yet, we I don't. Swear. We don't. Is is this even a podcast? Is this something that we're just doing for like your YouTube channel? Or this, I, don't, I, I don't. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Yeah, it probably does. <laughs> it probably doesn't matter at this point. It's just some content. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, w- welcome to content with a capital C. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, everyone. Welcome to whatever it is we're doing, where uh, myself, uh, Justin, and Alice. Hey, uh, Alice Afazandam. Yeah, are here to talk to you about engineering disasters. Mm-hmm. It's so, sort of like a podcast, but not really, because there's a visual component too, where I do a PowerPoint. So, for the first episode of whatever the hell this is, we're going to talk about I bars. We're going to talk about redundancy. We're going to talk about Mothman. We're going to mm. talk about redundancy. <laughs> We're going to talk about the 1967 Silver Bridge disaster and redundancy, of course. I'm looking forward to this one. I love a good bridge collapse. And just to establish the dynamic early here, you're the technical one. You know this stuff. I am the jokes idiot who has read the Wikipedia page five minutes before. So I know it's a bridge, <laughs> and I know it, it didn't go so well. Yeah, it's uh, it, it fell over, unfortunately. Mm. Which is what we're about to learn about. That's the one okay. thing you don't want a bridge to do. Some sometimes, like uh, you know, maybe if it's like a drawbridge, you know, it sort of ah, falls true, yeah. up and down. Sometimes that's good. Mm. That's the only time I can think of it, though. Okay, so the Silver Bridge disaster is the one they teach you at engineering school usually, or it, it, it's a big part of the per- curriculum. So anyway, uh, let's talk a little about uh, a little bit about um iron bridge construction right okay so this is the iron bridge in shropshire in england right oh yeah that's the um the first one they made out of um cast iron right yes and uh the thing is they didn't have any math to support what they were doing at the time right (laughs) not or or not certainly not what we would now conceive of right and of course there's Mm -hmm. no modern techniques so all of this you you just eyeball it it's fine yeah exactly it's like it's an it's an arch bridge you can't fuck it up that badly Mm. right i mean you can but usually during construction once it's up it's there yeah so we didn't we didn't have modern engineering techniques either so all this iron work is held together essentially with carpentry joints (laughs) Is that good? Like, I, well, it's still up. You have a photo. It's still there. Also. Yeah, we, exactly. We have the slides. So, it, yeah, this is fine. It can't be yeah, too it, bad. It, if it's still there, it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, but eventually we start, you know, we start getting into an era where we have math, right? So there's this German guy in the 1860s, right? And he wrote a book. Mm. Not Inventing the Ger- math. Yes, yes. Not Not the German guy we usually talk about in the sort of... Uh, content we do this was uh <laughs> yeah good, good. i'm, guy, I'm yeah. looking at the slide here and it's just I, yeah. I see an a and what looks like an er and i'm just like nah. all right so this was august ritter he was a german engineer he wrote theory and calculation of iron bridges and roofs right and where we sort of get um i'm not sure if it was from this book that we got classical trust theory Trying to avoid putting math on the screen. No one wants to see that, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but, but you, uh, build, you build the thing with the triangles and it doesn't fall down. Like, yeah, we've exactly. all played Polybridge or whatever, so... So the way the way this... Uh, if if you're watching this and you went to engineering school, this is where we get the theory or, or the uh, method of sections for calculating the stresses in individual members of a truss, right? And And the reason we do it this way... Um, is to simplify calculations, right? Because engineers are lazy. Uh, <laughs> Incidentally, so, if you if you are going to engineering school or have gone to engineering school and you're listening to this, I'm so sorry, I don't know anything. Uh, so that's what we're all here to fix, though. All right, so the the important thing here is that every connection in the truss, according to the theory, is a pin connection, right? Uh, and what is a pin connection? A pin connection is, there's three types of connections, right? So you have a roller that's like a beam sitting on a log. The reaction goes up. Then there's a, a, a pin connection, which is like, you know, sort of a hinge. So you have two forces. Then you have your fixed connection. That's like a stick stuck in the mud. So there's like three 
reactions. There's, you know, X, Y forces plus it resists rotation. So we assume everything's a pin for truss theory, right? And obviously it doesn't have to be a pin connection for the theory to work. If you made things fixed and joined together so they didn't rotate, it might be a little stronger, right? Hmm. But or, rather, or if you just balanced it on a log, then it would be not strong at all. But very entertaining. No, actually, a lot of bridges, basically one end is on a pin connection and the other end's on a roller to really? allow for expansion and contraction. Huh. Yes. Okay. So I, ha I have no intuition for this bridge shit. No, no. It turns out if it's less connected, sometimes it's better. Hmm. Okay. But here's, here's the important part is... Be Rather than build slightly stronger than what the theory might allow, uh, this thing called an I-bar was developed, which more closely matches the theory. Um, now, this is, uh, this is a piece of metal, right? And uh, it's, got a, it's got a circly bit on one end, a circly bit on the other end. There's a hole in it, and you stick a cylinder in there, right? Mm. It's, it's, just, the, it's the inanimate carbon rod. Like, yes. Mm. Okay. So they, literally, they 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 just did this because it made math easier. Yeah, it made the math easier. <laughs> okay, Look, sure. I mean, uh, and we 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 still. I mean, we don't use them anymore today. And by the way, this is an I bar, not to be confused with an I beam, which is completely mm. different. Uh, and if you're an engineer, you don't call it an I beam; you call it a W section. You know, just to make things more complex. But, you know, so I-bars aren't inherently bad, right? They were used pretty successfully in truss bridges. Like, this is an I-bar truss in East Falls in Philadelphia that, you know, That's I use fairly frequently. Yeah, it's a nice-looking bridge, and it's still there. Mm, which, means, which is the thing that you want, yeah. Yes, yes. So, but I-bars were pretty quickly, we decided, all right, well, we can use these for more than just trusses. We started applying them to suspension bridges. So like hmm. this is this is the Clifton Bridge, which was built in 1864, right? Yeah, and you see by how... our boy Brunel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he like sort of had this megalomaniacal thing, so it's seven times the size it needs to be to cover a tiny gorge. Awesome. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and uh, of course, one of the things Brunel was known for was redundancy. You know, mm. or redundancy was one of the things Brunel was known for. Uh, <laughs> it was redundancy. All right. So, but all right, we can sort of see how the um, how these I bar chains, right? We don't have just one or two I bars. We have a we have an ass load of them, right? There's like ten mm. on each segment of the chain, and then there's three chains, right? And they're huge too. Like yeah, I was they're... looking at the little cables running along the top of them, thinking, "Is that the?" Th I'm like, "No, it's the j you can't see the like um, uh, the wood for the trees." Oh yeah. And I assume these little cables here are so you can uh, hook yourself onto them so you can walk the chains and do the inspection. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so we have, you know, there's a lot of redundancy here. If one single eye bar fails, it's not a big deal, right? I mean, it is a big deal. They would have to close the bridge and then replace the eye bar almost immediately. But, you know, it wouldn't, like, immediately cause the bridge to collapse. Now, uh, let's fast forward a bit. We're going to... 1928 in West Virginia, wild and wonderful. So, mm -hmm. having just got off of like uh, bombing, striking mine workers with air aircraft, the government decides, hey, let's build a bridge. No, the government didn't decide that. Private mm -hmm. company did. Oh, even better. That's, yeah, so, that's like the mark of efficiency and quality. Yes. So, the Gallia County, Ohio River Bridge Company decided they were going to build a toll bridge. Uh, at Point Pleasant across the Ohio River, right along where this red line is, right? And you may notice there's not a bridge there anymore, <laughs> which is a problem. Yeah, it's sort of a very obvious failure mode. Although I do see one that's, uh, like, right next to it. Is that the one they built after this one went no, that, bad? that is the railroad bridge, which was there before and was there afterwards as well. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, railroads, like, beating all comers in terms of making bridges that stay up because you have to do math. Yes. Train, good. Car, bad. <laughs> Train, good. Car, bad. 
Yeah, that's that. That's the policy proposal level that we're going for. We had rent control, and now we have train good, car bad. Yes. This is this is this is a simple policy proposal. I think even congressmen can understand. Uh, <laughs> so, this private corporation, right? They put out a bid for an engineering firm to come up with a design for a bridge that would go here, right? And they wanted a regular suspension bridge with, you know, cables like we have now, not with chains. Chains were kind of old-fashioned by this point, right? Mm, but uh, Retro. A, a firm called J.E. Griner Company put out a bid which undercut everyone else's bid by a huge margin, right? And they were going to build a suspension bridge with I-bar chains, that were made out of a special high-strength steel, right? Mm, I see the we, thinking here. Yeah. If, if, if we keep doing this, I'm pretty sure high-strength steel is going to be a theme. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the, the company that was building the bridge was like, all right, yeah, this sounds like a great fucking idea. Why not, right? So they, uh, they hired the American Bridge Company to put the thing up with steel, high-strength steel from the U.S. Steel Company. Right. Yeah. Uh, and what could it. go wrong? It's it's high strength. It's high strength. Yeah. I mean, there's there's nothing there's nothing that can you know it's it's more better. Yeah. Therefore, and and if the more better good. good number is higher up, then that means that no bad can happen. Yes. Yes. Uh, just as we learned from the Titanic, uh, the high strength steel is good. <laughs> Okay, so Our, they build this thing. Why, why do they build it with I bars? Like, is there a reason other than just it's cheaper? Uh, it's a private. Co it's a private company. It's cheaper. Hmm, so, okay, cool. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that bit in Chernobyl where he indicts the whole Soviet system with, "Oh, it's the same reason we do anything. It's cheaper." I'm like, "Yeah, yes. we would never do that here." My God. Hmm. Right. So. This is not a photo of the Silver Bridge. This is a photo of the bridge that was just upriver that was pretty much identical, right? Uh, built by the same company to essentially the same design. Um, uh, this was It was called the Silver Bridge because it had silver paint. It's not, you know, actually, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's not, like, a location nearby that's, like, silver or something. So, anyway, uh, if you think back to the Clifton Bridge two slides ago, right, we had the... Um, uh, what's it? Um, you know, there was three sets of ten uh, eye bars for each chain, right? Yeah, and these giant towers that had to be like really wide just to fit them all through, right? Yeah, well, that looks quite slender to me. This had two sets of eye bars per chain, and uh -huh. you know, only one chain on each side of the bridge, right? Uh -huh. But they're made of high strength steel, though. Yeah, so, so that's yeah. fine. That's fine, that's yeah, fine. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so this causes a couple problems, though, which were kind of uh, compounded themselves over time, right? Number one being it's very difficult to inspect the chains because, you know, it's it's kind of hard to walk up the chains to take a look at them, right? Um, Especially when they're that much thinner, too, right? Like Yes. That was the big problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just saying, if I had to pick between like walking up in a harness on the like giant wide eye bars or these tiny ones, I know which one I'm picking. I I wouldn't walk up any suspension bridge uh cable. Yeah. That's that's scary. <laughs> just, I, I, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't don't do that. Don't try this at home. Uh we, bridge well, inspections. Mm, no. You you can't really you can't really walk up the chain at home unless you're unless you live in the suspension bridge. Well, I mean, we don't want to make any like assumptions about oh, our viewers. That's a good good point. Yeah, we might have a might have a couple bridge trolls uh, listening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So another part of this is is designed. You know, 1928 is supposed to carry Ford Model Ts and maybe nine ton trucks, right? Um, and it also used things called rocker towers, right? So Rather than, um, uh, what's the word here? Rather than, uh, you know, in a modern suspension bridge to deal with expansion and contraction, right? The cables can slide over the top of the tower slightly. Uh, yeah, they're um, kind of like loose, right? They're like threaded yeah. through. Yeah, just a little bit. So instead of doing this, they did something else. 
where if you look at the base of each tower, you can see it's on hinges, right? Oh, no. Seriously? So, yeah, <laughs> so this is fairly common uh, in a lot of European uh, I-bar suspension bridges, actually. Not so common Making in the United just... States. Making me feel just great about going over any bridges is just, oh yeah, the tower that like holds all of this up and has all of the stresses on it, that's on a hinge. It's on a yeah, it's it's and it's on so, a hinge. It's it's a it's a folding bridge. It's more efficient. You can like collapse it and you can keep it in a pocket. Uh look, I think a pocket bridge would be very useful if I had to cross a river. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just like it's just like Minecraft. Mm-hmm. You just like right. snap it open like a, like a like a, a switchblade or a, a yeah. butterfly knife or something. It's great. holding thousands of tons of stone in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So these towers are able to rock back and forth by very small amounts in order to compensate for expansion and contraction from heat, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and this worked fine for a while, right? But. We're going to fast forward from 1928 when it was built to 1967. So the cars are bigger. The trucks are bigger. The traffic yeah, jams. Got giant, got giant like Chevrolets and shit. They've rooted. Like 20 pound structural wings on everything. Yes. And they rooted uh, US Route 35 over the bridge. So this is now a major like highway in the area. And it's West Virginia, so there's not a lot of interstates, so all the traffic is using this bridge. Mm. Uh, so, what was next? So, I, just, I, I, have a, I have a, like, a Republican view on this, which is literally that by routing the, um, the highway, Route 30, over it, this is a classic case of big government overreach. And if they had just, like, left the free markets alone, the bridge would have been fine. Oh, that's the other thing is they the the state of West Virginia bought the bridge from uh, the private company in <laughs> 1941. So, oh, cool. You know, yeah, exactly. They had all they they had all made their money 30 years ago and gone away. Mm. Yeah, and no one was chasing them down after this and being like, you know, did you build this bridge shitty in 1928? Oh, we'll get to that. Mm. So. We'll go back to this I-bar diagram. This is I-bar number 330, right? And there was a microscopic fracture in it when it was built in 1928. So, uh, no one could, no one had technology at the time to, you know, find out, find this fracture and take a look at it, right? So, mm. and that's that that's inherent in the manufacturing process too, right? Like nobody fucked up to make this happen. Pretty much, yeah. So, uh. During rush hour, December 15th, 1967, this I-bar failed, right? Right along where you see these cracks here. So what, what, hap- what ha- happened was, immediately, <laughs> the, uh, all the load from that one chain was shifted to the one good I-bar in that section of chain. And uh, it also snapped, right? But it, and then was, the it was high strength. How... <laughs> How could it do that if it was high strength steel? That's uh, why you have it be high strength. They they didn't get the high enough strength steel. Uh, should have got like higher strength or like double high strength. Double plus high strength steel. Yeah. Mhm. They had 1984 hadn't been written then so they wouldn't have known about that. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh so and this then, you know, so we now had a whole section of the K of the, the chain, which was no longer there. Right. Which is bad for structural integrity. Um, so what happened because of this, you know, in an ordinary suspension bridge, this is very, very bad. Right. If you lose a cable. Right. And you're probably going to lose a section of the bridge. Mm-hmm. This bridge has rocker towers, though. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you kind of see the problem here already? Yeah, so you have a immediate... pocket bridge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're, we we're watching the bridge fold in on itself during rush hour, right? Mm. So, um, crap. I didn't. Okay, yeah. Here here's a picture of the I bar when they recovered it from the bottom of the river. Um, so I didn't put any notes here. 
Okay. So yeah, one of the cables snaps. The rocker tower rocks farther than ever has before, falls into mm-hmm. the drink. The other one follows suit. Everyone falls in the Ohio River. Uh, not, not so that good. There's, not that there's anything, like, it wouldn't have made a difference, but um, the the towers being on hinges, right, how do you keep them within a, uh, like, a range of a few degrees? Do you just, like, rely on, well, it's never going to be under that much stress, or is there anything to, like, stop it? I am pretty sure there are there are probably stoppers but they're probably you know kind of kind of they're they're not going to they're not going to do much under any significant no. load like it, it, i'm not precisely sure how a rocker tower if there's like some limiter or not i'd think it'd be uh. you know think kind of like a guide mast or something like that like big radio transmitter tower i mean those are on hinges too and uh you know really? they stay up yeah hmm Everything's it, more it, flexible it, than you think. <laughs> it, but if it had those, it just sheared right through them. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And so now the middle bit, the span that we're all looking at here, is that's underwater. Pretty and much, yeah. W- with the towers on top of it, too. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, here's some of the aftermath. Uh, right. At 5 p.m. on December 15th, 1967, eyewitnesses recall there was a loud gunshot-like noise and folding like a deck of cards in less than 20 seconds, the entire 1,460-foot suspended portion of the Silver Bridge collapsed into the river, taking with the 32 vehicles and 46 victims, including, including two whose bodies were never found. F. I mean, F's in the chat, because ouch. <laughs> I mean, that's, like, you've got to figure that a lot of people, like, it would have been terrible, but still not as bad if the towers hadn't come down on top of the the collapsed span, right? Like, Yeah, I mean, the Ohio, the Ohio isn't that deep, I don't think. I might be completely yeah, I mean, wrong on that. Well, you, you can see like there's, a, there's like, a shallow barge in, in the slide there with the cranes on it, and, like, that... Yeah kind of draft means it's got to be a pretty shallow river but like obviously the drop's going to be bad and but like having a fucking like giant silver uh, aluminum painted um uh tower come down on top of your car also not a great day like i feel like that would really put a cap on a lot of the like uh shit that you think you've been through in the seconds before that also you're in like a 1960s car which, you oh, know, yeah, so you've, you've already been impaled on the steering column by this point. It's fine. Yeah, uh, and, you, and if, you, yeah. You are, if you are living, then, you know, it's not like, uh, it, it's not like you know, those doors are going to open if there's even, like, no, a slight dent no. in the car, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just getting, like, um, giant shards of, like, regular glass thrown at you, uh, and, like, big fucking white wall tires and shit. The fuel tank's leaking, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not ideal. Somehow you set the river on fire. <laughs> yeah. So, so they inspected this bridge seven days earlier, hmm. but that inspection did not notice the tiny stress fracture under, which was basically under the paint of the difficult to access already uh, I bar three hundred and thirty, right? Hmm. So, like, even like this is the sixties, right? So obviously they don't have the technology. If you did, if you had that technology today, is there any way to, like, safely inspect that? Because you can't go up and, like, x-ray every eye bar, right? You can do ultrasonic testing. I, I think you, would, you, you probably would have to look at every hmm. single eye bar, actually. Uh, huh. You know, I've got to, it might take a couple weeks, but, you know, you'd be able to do yeah. it. I, I'm not. I'm not precisely sure how they do it uh, on eye bars today, but well, I mean, hopefully they have something because the inspection for this was literally just like a guy climbs up it and looks, right? Yeah, he probably doesn't even have safety equipment. He's probably just like, you know, he's probably wearing like a nice like dress shirt and a tie and everything because it's like 1967. <laughs> yeah. he's, and he's just, just like, smoking, oh. also. Oh, obviously, yeah. mm-hmm. how could you not? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're up there, the air's, like, that little bit thinner, so you get a better, like, a slightly better draw off your camel, it's great. Yeah, and he's he's basically walking a tightrope made of metal. 
Mm -hmm. made a high strength <laughs> steel, excuse me. Yes. So anyway, the lesson here uh, is, of course, redundancy. And redundancy is the lesson, right? If we go back mm -hmm. to the Clifton Bridge, you know, if this had been built with many, many, many I bars as opposed to two, you know, if one of the if if, if I bar three thirty had failed, again they would have shut down the bridge and replaced it, but it wouldn't have fallen down. No, because you still have seven or whatever on that one side. Like, it's not gonna um, like overpower it, but you have to have like a sleeker aluminum bridge instead of this giant squat brick thing. Yes. So the victims uh, went out and they sued U.S. Steel. They sued American Bridge. They sued the state of West Virginia. And uh, in 1971, the National Transportation Safety Board, uh, you know, they acknowledged the design of the bridge was unsafe and made regular inspections very difficult or impossible. But they assigned the blame to nobody. Uh, hmm. Love when that happens. My yes. favorite regulatory agency. And as you say, if we keep doing these, I expect to hear a lot more about the NTSB. So, yes, the locals, on the other hand, assigned the blame to none other than Mothman. <laughs> of course. Of right. course they did. I, I believe this implicitly <laughs> now. Like, you're the, um, you're the engineer. I'm, I'm the Mothman truther. I think this was a rogue Mothman. Uh... And I say rogue because we don't want to tar all Mothman with the same brush. But, yeah, actions of a rogue Mothman. Yes. So I'm just going to have the Wikipedia article open for this one uh, to talk about who, who is Moth Mothman. Uh, so November 12th, 1966, that was uh, two months before the accident, uh, five men who were digging a grave at a cemetery. Excuse me, that was about a year before. I'm not sure. Mm. I, I, but, they, but they were out doing something tremendously were, normal and yes, not they were, spooky they, at all. They were digging a grave mm -hmm. at a cemetery near Clendin in West Virginia, and they said they saw a man-like figure fly low from the trees over their heads, right? Yeah, which is a mothman, because yes, they, fursonas haven't been invented yet, so it has to be some kind of cryptid. <laughs> What is it? Shortly thereafter, November 15th, 1966, two young couples from Point Pleasant, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Millette, told police they saw a large gray creature whose eyes glowed red when the car's headlights picked it up. They described mm. it as a large flying man with 10-foot wings following their car while they were driving in an area outside of town known as the TNT area. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? The Why site, is it known as that? The site of a former World War II munitions plant. Ah, West, I see. Okay. West Virginia, so, wild and wonderful. Hmm. So the government made Mothman, is what I'm getting from this. And then in revenge for his warped existence, he knocked down their bridge. I guess so, yeah. I mean, Mothman made entirely out of TNT. I mean, he's the, he's the original Minecraft creeper. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, f the way to study this for the future is that the engineering redundancy is important only to the extent that it failed to mitigate the damage from the rogue Mothman. I was about to say, yeah, I mean, if they had, if they had only built the bridge out of obsidian blocks as opposed to yeah, high-strength steel... exactly. You, then yeah, it would be fine. You would have he would have like crumbled a few things, and they would have gone straight down into the the water and the sand and everything. But it would have been fine. Yes, those folks have been wearing diamond armor. This uh, <laughs> this whole this whole uh, incident could have been avoided. Yeah. <laughs> so mo the Mothman is that that's. I mean, Point Pleasant was at one end of this bridge, right? So that's definitely, like, that's right there, and, like, a year before. So it, it does make sense as, like, a folk understanding of uh, a horrific tragedy that just killed, what, like, two dozen people. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. This is, like... I, I, I have nothing. I don't know what to say about ro <laughs> about Mothman. I'd say... I don't know. I mean, he collapsed a bridge. He seems like a pretty bad dude. 
Yeah, I don't like, I, I don't I, like Mothman. I, I think we have to say that whatever this content is, whatever we're calling it, whatever brand we have to come up with, we are a, a pro-Mothman podcast stroke slideshow, and uh, we don't want to anger him or disrespect him in any way. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm in Pennsylvania. That's like adjacent to West Virginia, so I, I probably got to worry about the Mothman more than you do. Yeah, absolutely. Although, although we don't know how far he can travel, so hmm. really, it's 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 anyone's guess. I have friends in West Virginia. They better watch out for Mothman. Hmm. All right. So never mind. Mothman. Good. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> took out a bridge. Maybe maybe he was angered by the bridge. I don't know. Yeah. M- maybe the bridge provoked him. Uh, note, however, that he did not take out the railway bridge, which is, um, as the podcasters like to say, Praxis. Mothman, pro train. All right. Okay, I like Mothman mm-hmm. now. <laughs> so, okay, so the Silver yeah, you, Bridge you, you is never ahead. rebuilt, right? They never mm. rebuild it on the site. They do build the Silver Memorial Bridge downstream, though. It- <laughs> <laughs> the Silver Memorial Bridge really is a name that inspires confidence. Like it's that's such a Simpsons sign gag of just sort of putting a a, a little um like marker on the the sign for the old bridge with a memorial inserted. That's a load bearing memorial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's it's the old bridge, but it just has like a wreath on it. <laughs> so, uh. That that carries US thirty five to this day, and you know it's a cantilever bridge, kind of boring. Um, and then uh, is it even silver? I can't see it from the the photo. Well, you know, I'm not sure. I only saw one photo of it. Typical. Like if it was, if that's false advertising, like I I say, go back and sue West Virginia. I think it's more of a gray bridge. <laughs> <sighs> Typical. And then uh, the last slide I got here is uh, every other bridge of this kind in the world, of which there were three, was torn down, <laughs> except <laughs> this one in Brazil. Hmm. Uh, this is the very, very functioning country, especially at the moment. Yes, this is the Hercilio Luz Bridge in Florianopolis, in, in Santa Catarina in Brazil. It's very similar design, but much larger. Uh, designed by <laughs> David B. Steinman, who was a guy who didn't suck at bridge building as much as the company mentioned mm. before. Uh, yeah, well, evidently, because it's still there. It's still and there, yeah. <laughs> I, I noticed those supports in the middle of the span, which um, the Silver Bridge did not have. Well, uh, were those, uh, those are in for, the original design or new? Those are temporary supports, because what they're doing right now uh, you know, 60 years after the original Silver Bridge disaster, they finally decided, hmm, we should probably do some reinforcements on this. <laughs> so they're adding a few more eye bars to the chains. Ah, okay, excellent. In, in, in year of our Lord 2019. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you love to see it. I mean, like, I, I, I do wonder if people are going to be like, uh, no, this is terrible because it's going to compromise the, like, slender newest like old aesthetics of our bridge uh and just make it utilitarian and brutalist and boring i don't know i think they'll probably like it because they'll be able to use the bridge again because it's been closed since 1990 uh that's that was that that at least was wise of them like closing the bridge and just making it like a giant sort of paperweight yeah well you can see all the same design features even got rocker towers (laughs) hmm well, I mean, I, I, I feel great about it. I'm booking tickets right now. I'm going to go and I'm going to drive over it in a giant truck. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, this, this this is fine. It's fine. Yes, watch out for Bolsonaro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the, the, the two kinds of danger in the world. is Mothman, Bolsonaro. Yes. <laughs> uh I don't know. Is Mothman? Is Mothman? Well, Bolsonaro hasn't collapsed a bridge yet. That's to my true. knowledge. Yeah. Um, uh, hmm. I don't know. Maybe we could set Mothman against Bolsonaro somehow. Well, we just have a, a cage match. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mothman. Exactly. Mothman like comes up behind Bolsonaro and hits him with the folding chair. 
<laughs> By God, is that Mothman's music? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, fingers crossed we're not going to be looking at the um, El Cilio uh, Luz uh, Memorial Bridge this time next year. <laughs> that's a... That's a load-bearing memorial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a load-bearing wreath. Just a really <laughs> thick steel wreath. Well, I mean, when you think about it, that's uh, that's what's at the end of every eye bar. That's hmm. true. Yeah. Makes you think. Hmm. Okay, so what did we learn from all this, other than do redundancy and do redundancy and high-strength steel is a scam? Um, I would say those are the main lessons. Uh, you know, re redundancy is important because, uh, you need to have stuff be able to fail to a certain extent where you can visually see something is wrong before, like, uh, yeah. you know, everything just falls down catastrophically. It has to be a mood. It has to be a big mood. Someone has to be able to look at it and say, same. Yes. Yeah, when the when the inspector comes and looks at the cable and says, "Hmm, big mood." That's when yeah. that, that's when you <laughs> that's, know. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you know you got to fix something. Mhm. Mm that's it though. You have we have like room for failures and redundancy and use more steel rather than better with air quotes steel yes. and hopefully your bridge doesn't fall into the Ohio River and kill 2000 people. Better steel is worse. Yeah. Yeah, use use more things. Yeah, quantity yes. has a quality all its own. The Soviets got it right. Just mm -hmm. yeah. simplify and add weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is why the Soviets' bridges were so good, was because they were designed to a quota by weight. So you have a yeah. 20,000 ton uh, like bridge over a stream. There's just a giant cube of metal in the middle of the stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You just drive over the top, it's like perfectly smooth. Yeah, fantastic. It's a good bridge, yes? It's a good bridge. Not so good for water flow, but very good for <laughs> drive train. <laughs> That's fine, you put a fish tube over it, it's fine. That's the worst solution to any problem I've heard of. What, what the fish tube? The fish tube, like, oh, we're going to build a bridge, but it blocks the water flow, so we're going to build uh -huh. locks on either side. Yeah. And build a bridge for the boats to go across over the bridge. <laughs> yeah, but we did get like a day and a half of, of, of content out of it. And what more can you ask for from a civil engineering product than that? Yes. All right. So that was the Silver Bridge disaster. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Is there any, anything else we got to say? I don't think so. I think this is like a, a, a good kind of. Uh, Way to launch whatever it is we're calling this. We will think of a name between yes. this and the next one. Um, and it's going to be about like engineering things that go terribly wrong. And sometimes they're going to kill a lot of people like this did. Sometimes they're not. Either way, the promise you get from me is that I'm going to be grotesquely blasé about it. Um, and yeah, we're going to explain why things go awful. Yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about all the things going wrong. Um, I guess, uh, Alice, do you have anything to pitch before you go? Um, or... uh, listen to my other podcast, Trash Future, available wherever podcasts are sold. Uh, that's really it. All right. Uh, I'm going to say if you're in the Southeast Pennsylvania area, um, the United Auto Workers are on strike. Uh, and oh, yeah, that's important. we're having yeah. some, uh, we're having some, you know, uh, some of our organizers are getting folks out to uh, go support the picketers because it's a really small plant and they're doing 24-hour picketing. So, you know, if you want to help cover some shifts, uh, DM me uh, or DM uh, at little underscore Yenta uh, for details on that. There's a big rally that we're holding on the picket line on Saturday, the, what is that, the 28th. Uh, and also, other than that, watch my YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, I yeah. don't know if this will be on my YouTube channel or not. I think so, but like we'll figure it out. And we'll figure that out. Always respect Mothman. Yes. Respect Mothman or we will come and tear down a bridge near you. <laughs> you might be on it. That would not be good. Yeah.
Thanks for watching, guys. All right, bye.